let me introduce you to what might be one of the coolest devices I've ever used. This is the Analog Pocket. Available in both black or white at $220, it's a sleek, portable handheld modeled after the original Game Boy. Only infinitely better. Not only does it support the entire library of Game Boy games out of the box, including the black and white originals, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games as long as you have the original cartridges, but it can even play other portable system libraries too through the purchase of optional adapters, allowing you to play the entire libraries for the Sega Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Atari Lynx, and TurboGrafx-16. Basically, the single device supports nearly 4,000 games. And thanks to its FPGA architecture, it renders them all 100% faithfully to the original hardware, thereby avoiding the common imperfections introduced by emulators that can affect the presentation or playability, at least in theory. Now, just to be clear, there are zero games built into the console itself. You have to provide your own, just like in the good old days. Luckily, as one who grew up through the Game Boy era, I just so happen to have a ton of games across all generations of the Game Boy hardware. But after sliding one in with a satisfying thunk, I was not prepared for what was about to happen. Which was how absolutely drop-dead gorgeous the games would look on the hardware, now being displayed at a size and clarity like never before in a portable form factor. The screen quality alone is astonishing. With a diagonal length of 3.5 inches, which is far bigger than any of the Game Boy line, and a resolution of 1600 by 1440, it has a PPI, or pixels per inch, of 615 which is notably higher than even the latest iPhone or Pixel phones. Wow! Now, given that the resolution is 10 times the original Game Boy, the games have been upscaled to fill the entire, larger display. And the result is not only flawless, as far as I could tell, but beautiful too. It didn't matter whatever game I threw at it, whether the black and white Donkey Kong 94, or the more colorful Game & Watch Gallery 2, or one of the Super Mario Advances, or even Sonic the Hedgehog on the Game Gear. They all look spectacular. For what they are, of course. These are still Game Boy and Game Gear games after all, but there is a certain beauty to what was accomplished on such little hardware. Now, this feels a little silly to say, but I do have to point out that the screen is obviously backlit too, just like any modern display, but also unlike almost the entirety of the Game Boy line. As one who still remembers the struggle of trying to see what the heck was happening on screen back in the day, I can't even begin to express a revelation that is finally being able to see them with literally zero effort. It's far and away better than even the backlit second generation of the Game Boy Advance SP. It's as if I'm finally seeing these games as the developers originally intended, with perfect clarity on a handheld system, all without any of the blurriness associated with the original systems. Although, as one who grew up throughout the Game Boy era, I did notice a small interesting side effect. As a result of the pocket's aspect ratio being based on the original Game Boy, Game Boy Advance games, which are displayed on the screen larger than the original model, actually end up filling less of the screen due to the wider aspect ratio. But even so, Game Boy Advance games still benefit from the marginally larger display area and much sharper screen, although some may find the letterboxing slightly distracting. In any case, you don't have to have grown up with the original Game Boy series to appreciate what's on display here, as almost anyone with a fondness for retro-style graphics will likely be impressed by the visual fidelity, especially when using the default analog display option for each system. But, if you're looking to recapture the more traditional look of the original hardware, whether for nostalgia's sake or just out of curiosity, the Pocket offers multiple display options for each platform, such as a slightly darker look with visible pixels in the case of Game Boy Color games, or of course a pea soup green filter to mimic the original Game Boy screen, with the extreme motion blur thankfully not being included. The vastly improved visuals aren't just for show, as I found that the games felt better to play as a result too. It made revisiting these games an absolute treat, especially since everything else about them seemed pitch perfect in my memory. The music and sound effects were spot on, and I didn't notice any input latency at all, which is pretty important because these games can be pretty freaking tough. But luckily, and awesomely, there is a beta option you can turn on to enable save states. Just hold the home button while pressing up to save or down to reload. The only catch is that for now, you can only have a single save state, period, across every game. But the developers have said that they're working to add a much more fleshed out feature set in the future. Not only does the analog pocket look like a premium product, which is impressive to say for something based on this, but it feels like one too, with a solid grippy feel thanks to the matte finish and a good weight. Though, at 275 grams, it is heavier than any previous Game Boy system, but not excessively so. And it does come in weighing a little less than the Switch, but the system's vertical format may make it seem a little bit closer than it actually is. 
The buttons are all very responsive and have a wonderful clicky feel, offering a great tactile response. The D-pad, in particular, might be the best of any current system, and I felt right at home on it, with zero misread inputs in all of my testing. You'll find most of the buttons exactly where you'd expect to based on the previous Game Boy models. Although, I did feel like I needed to stretch just a little farther than I remembered to reach Start and Select, which could possibly be a slight annoyance for games that rely on them for key functions. You'll also find a set of shoulder buttons on the back for Game Boy Advance games, and they're nearly identical to the SPs in size and feel, but they're not quite as comfortable as they once were owing to their slightly awkward position flanking the cartridge slot, causing my fingers to brush up against it constantly, which was a little annoying, but also ultimately not too difficult to adjust to. In addition, you'll find a few extra buttons beyond what you would on standard Game Boy hardware, including two additional face buttons, along with the aforementioned home button sandwiched between Start and Select, which is a pretty brilliant spot and allows quick access to the system settings, where you can change things like the screen's brightness, sharpness, size, and position, among plenty of other options. My personal favorite is the option to enable Super Game Boy controls, which basically allows you to use Y and B instead of A and B, meaning you can run with Y as God intended. You'll also find a power button on the left side which doubles as a quick way to put it to sleep, along with a volume rocker right above it. Beyond the buttons, you'll find quite a few ports scattered about too, including a USB slot at the bottom for charging, right next to a port for the multiplayer cable that allows you to play against other pockets or even original Game Boys. And for you Game Boy Color fans, there's even an infrared transceiver that allows you to wirelessly transmit data between systems for games that supported it. And check this out! There's even a headphone port here too! Remember those? But that does unfortunately mean that Bluetooth headphones aren't supported. Finally, you'll find a micro SD card slot on the right side, which is how you'll upgrade the firmware, retain save states, and even load up entirely new Game Boy games. Wait, what? New Game Boy games? Yep, the Pocket fully supports playing games that were created using GB Studio, which is a free retro game creator that doesn't require any programming knowledge at all. So in case the built-in support of nearly 4,000 games isn't enough for you, you can enjoy a potentially infinite amount more, even possibly including those that you've made yourself. Neat! The Pocket impresses on the sound front too. Not only are there two speakers, which is unheard of for the Game Boy series, but they can get ridiculously loud too. I could easily hear the thing from the other side of the apartment. And it's just what I need for rocking out to DK94. Yeah! Now, in case you just want to relax on the couch while playing some classic games, there is an optional $100 Switch Lite dock that will let you do just that. Just drop the pocket into the low-profile dock, sometimes a little finagling, and you'll have the image up on the TV in no time. Unfortunately, neither the pocket nor the dock come with any of the controllers that you'll need to play in docked mode. But the dock is compatible with any wireless Ipid Dope Bluetooth controller, which was remarkably easy to sync. Alternatively, you can connect most any USB controller to the dock too. Yeah, using an Xbox controller might look wrong, but it felt so right. The only quirk I discovered was that the system wouldn't let me remap any of the buttons, despite there clearly being an option for it. I can only assume this was a glitch that'll hopefully be fixed in an upcoming patch. Otherwise, the dock accomplishes exactly what it sets out to do, which is put the image onto the TV. And it does that well enough, as the games look fantastic on the big screen too. But you do unfortunately lose access to the alternate display modes that we mentioned earlier, as only the default analog setting is supported. We were also slightly disappointed that the dock doesn't allow for Super Game Boy enhanced features for supported games, like custom borders, color palettes, or even entirely unlockable 16-bit games. I wasn't expecting Super Game Boy support, but it would have been a nice touch. Overall, the dock is certainly a cool bonus, but at how nice the screen is on the pocket itself, it's definitely not essential. Now, back in handheld form, Analog claims that the battery will last between 6 to 10 hours with the brightness set to 75%, and that seems consistent with our own findings, where we eked out just about 6 hours on 100% brightness. Yeah, we're a little naughty. But when you have a screen this nice looking, it'd be a shame to use it at anything less than its full potential, right? So to wrap things up, the Analog Pocket truly has breathed new life into a collection of games I had long since abandoned. Seeing them on the Pocket's gorgeous LCD screen looking better than ever at unprecedented clarity is like seeing them with fresh new eyes. I found myself being absorbed back into these games in a way I hadn't since I was a kid. Tetris Effect may be the one in this series getting all the buzz these days, but now you can experience the original game that was responsible for coining the term in the first place, only now looking at its very best, and it helped me fall in love with it all over again. Look, I've always had a soft spot for the Game Boy's library, and have long believed its best games rarely get the respect that they deserve, and those beliefs have only been hardened after revisiting them on the brilliance that is the analog pocket. 
There is a certain charm about this library of games that's been lost to time, that's unlikely to ever be captured in earnest again. But now that the pocket can present them in the best possible light, both figuratively and literally, perhaps people will finally be able to enjoy them as they were always meant to be. Or perhaps even better, it might even bring in new, younger fans who missed out on these handheld systems entirely. It might just be a bit tricky tracking down the physical cartridges for the games that they want to play. But hey, I suspect that they might be pretty good at catching them all, right? Analog's official website declares that there is no better way to explore all of handheld gaming than with the pocket. And after spending plenty of hours with the device myself, I can't help but agree. This truly is among the very best of the portable devices I've ever used. It has a sleek retro premium look, feels great in the hand, and it let me re-experience a library of beloved games like never before. And the fact that it not only supports the Game Boy line, but also nearly every other major handheld of the era with optional adapters is a cherry on top. I absolutely love the Analog Pocket, and I imagine I'll be playing it for years to come. Both are revisiting my existing library, but perhaps also games I've missed along the way too, including on those other non-Nintendo platforms. It's pretty rare that I get this excited for a physical product, but Analog truly hit it out of the park with a pocket. And there you have it, our review of the Analog Pocket. Thank you so much for watching, and of course make sure to click the subscribe button and ring that bell for more on the Analog Pocket and everything else gaming too. We'll catch you later. Bye everyone!